Welcome to the second producer's notes for Digital Combat Simulator Black Shark. In this note, we're going to take a close look at the uh, ABRIS uh, navigation system, uh, Advanced Moving Map System, AMMS. Um, the ABRIS is one of the two navigation systems on the KA-50, uh, the other being the uh, PVI-800 uh, inertial navigation system. Now, it's important to note that the two navigation systems are completely independent and in that they don't cross-link any information between the two of those. Um, so whereas the, uh, the PVI-800 is, again, primarily INS, the ABRIS is primarily a uh, uh, satellite navigation system. Now, the uh, ABRIS provides some very interesting capabilities, first, of course, being the moving map, but also it allows you to create new routes, edit routes, import new routes that were saved earlier. You can display uh, threat information in terms of uh, uh, enemy coverage, the ability to have data link information from your wingmen, and you could also uh, place icons and annotations on the map as well. So uh, all in all, pretty darn handy. Now, the ABRIS itself, of course, consists of the display. You have uh, five line select keys, LSKs, along the bottom, and you have two rotating dials on either side. Now, the one on the left, uh, rotating, allows you to uh, adjust the brightness of the display. The one on the right is used to select different lines uh, within a menu, and it also has a Z-axis to push, so you can select items as well. Now, the ABRIS has four primary pages, and those can all be cycled through using the rightmost LSK button. So right now we're looking at the menu, then we go to the, uh, the navigation, the nav, which is essentially the moving map, the uh, arc mode, the uh, HSI in digital form, and then back to the menu. Now, most folks are probably spending most of their time in ABRIS looking at the moving map system, so let's take a look at that one first. So here we have the moving map with um, our aircraft uh, here in the middle. Uh, the blue dots represent waypoints, and the blue line represents the course between each of the waypoints. We have our mode up here at the top, the uh, north arrow. These are our track angle, the satellite feed uh, status, and local time, either in Zulu or local. Uh, in the center, we have the cross-track tra error scale. In the left side, we have the current aircraft information, which includes our ground speed, our bearing, uh, the total time the aircraft's been in the air so far, uh, the altitude, and current coordinate. Uh, to the right of that is our vertical uh, error. And then to the <coughs> right of that are uh, data columns for the first and second waypoint here. Uh, and within each of those, we have the desired track angle, the distance, and the ETA to those two waypoints. Uh, below that, we have our message bar, and below that, we have um, subpages that we can link to. So let's take a look at the first one, which is our search function. And from here, what we can do is we can actually search out different airports, VORs, non-directional beacons, uh, waypoints in towns uh, near our position. So, for example, I will scroll down to uh, non-directional beacon, hit the search button, and this will now give me a list of all the different non-directional beacons uh, in, the, in the world from closest to furthest away. And using the rotating knob, I can now cycle through all those, and as I select each NDB, it places an NDB in the center of the screen, it gives me its name, and its distance from my current location. And again, you can do this for all the different types of map objects. Um, also here, we have the to function, and all that really does is if you have a multi um, waypoints in your uh, flight plan, you can hit the to function, it'll simply make a very simple flight plan consisting of one waypoint that goes to your current steer point. We can also now go to the info, and this will give us information about the current steer point we have selected as well. Coming back, We'll look at the, uh, the map functions, uh, the most important ones being the uh, scales. So we can scale in, and we can scale out, and here we see the entire flight plan now. We can go to the info button, and what this does is it gives us a red box on our current aircraft position, and by using the uh, right dial, we can spin it 
to move it in the horizontal, and then we can click on it to change it to the vertical axis. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over this NDB up here, hit the info button, and now it gives me information about that NDB. And again, I can do that for any map object uh, within the world here. Coming back out, I can go to the uh, ERBL function. And instead of a red square, we have a red cross now. And by moving the cross around in the same manner, I get a distance and bearing from the cross to my aircraft. Now, if I wanted to uh, have a bearing and range information from the cross to an arbitrary point, I can click on the marker function. And now the cross moves in relation to that new marker. And I have a bearing and range between the cross and the marker now. Coming back up, I go to the flight plan page, FBL, and this gives me a table uh, that lists the, uh, the entire flight plan. So as I move my dial here, I'm going through the different waypoints, third, fourth, and fifth, each highlighted. Now, if I want to make, say, waypoint uh, two, my active waypoint, I just simply click on the waypoint button, and that makes this green, which indicates it's active. Uh, in the rows here, we have our headings, wind conditions, airspeeds, distances, ETAs, fuels, and uh, temperatures. Now, the suspend, which is an interesting name, um, allows you to cycle your current steer point between the waypoints in your flight plan. So, by simply uh, clicking on this repeatedly, you can cycle through your flight plan. So that's a, um, a summation of the uh, navigation page. So now we'll take a look at the menu page. So here on the menu page, we have uh, timestamps for all uh, the information when it was first entered. We have the status of our sensors, the uh, GNSS, which is our satellite navigation system, and our radar altimeter. So we'll first take a look at the uh, GNSS. And this um, set of concentric circles represents the uh, current satellite constellation that is feeding us. So every uh, green circle you see is a valid um, signal we're getting, and the gray one represents an invalid signal that we're getting, and these are the different thresholds. So as you can see, uh, satellite 30 is below that threshold there. And it looks like we have a total of 9, with 8 being serviceable. Now, what we can also do is we can hit the Calculate button, and you can enter the uh, aerodrome uh, code here, hit the Enter button, and that would give you the satellite constellation over that point in the world. So it's a little handy tool to make sure that you're going to have good satellite coverage between your start point and your end point.